Good afternoon. Today we'll be talking about an example problem from Fogler for CHE 348. The problem statement says the elementary gas reaction 2A plus B goes to C is carried out isothermally in a PFR with no pressure drop. The feed is equimolar in A and B, and the entering concentration of A is 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. Set up a stoichiometric table and then determine the following. What are the concentrations of A, B, and C in moles per decimeter cubed and 25% conversion of A? What is the concentration of B at 100% conversion of A? Write the rate of disappearance of A solely as a function of conversion when the reaction is in elementary, irreversible, gas phase, isothermal, and has no pressure drop. And what is the rate of reaction at a conversion of 0.5? First off, we need to find a limiting reagent as this will be the basis of our problem. So first off, we can simply compare how many moles react to C, how many moles products is formed, hence two moles of A will form one mole of C, while two moles of B will generate two moles of C. So therefore, A is gonna be our limiting reagent. Then we're gonna set up our stoichiometric table. First off, we need to list our out our species, A, B, and C in this case. And then we're gonna take note of what enters, how it changes, and what leaves the system. So entering, because this is an equimolar reaction, F, FA naught is gonna indicate the amount of A entering. And then the quantity of B is gonna be the same as the quantity of A since it's equimolar. So FA naught is going to be for B as well. Now stoichiometry has an effect for the change. For A, we're simply going to be FA naught times X of A leaving. So that's going to bring make this entire thing negative. And then for B, we need to factor in the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction. For one B, there's going to be two A. So B is going to changing at a rate of negative one half FA naught times X of A. And then since C is in stoichiometric proportion of one to one with B, C is gonna just be the positive version of the result from B since there's, as we react, C is gonna become generated. So positive one half FA naught X of A. And finally, what we leave is the result of taking what enters minus what's changing. So in with species A, it's gonna become FA naught times one minus X of A when we factor out the FA naught. For B, we have FA naught times theta B minus one half X of A. And then for C, we have FA naught times quantity theta C plus one half X of A. Now let's define this new variable theta. Theta is defined as the concentration of a species divided by the concentration of a reference species. In this case, it's going to be A. However, in this case, because this system is equimolar in A and B, theta for B is going to be 1. And hence, we can also use this definition to define theta sub C. And because the initial concentration of C is zero, theta C is gonna become zero. And now that we have our entering, changing, and leaving flow rates, we can then define concentration of a species as F sub J divided by V. Now, because this is gas phase, we need to consider temperature and pressure at, on, on the effects of volume. So there's a handy relation, V equals V naught times one plus epsilon con times conversion times T over T naught times P naught over P for gases. Now, because this problem is isothermal and has no pressure drop, the T and P terms drop away, simply reducing the one. <laughs> Now we have this new term, a epsilon, in here. And epsilon is defined as delta times the initial mole fraction of A naught. 
why not is since it's equimolar is going to be 0. 0.5 and now delta delta is going to be the negative times the sum of the ratio of stoichiometric coefficients of a particular species over a reference and again because in this case, A is our basis. It's going to be the stoichiometric coefficient of A. When we define stoichiometric coefficients, we often define any products as having a positive coefficient and any reactants having a negative coefficient. So if we go back up here, if we take use the stoichiometric coefficient of the, of the product, it's going to be 1 divided by 2. And then for B, it's going to be negative 1 divided by negative 2, which is going to be 1 half. And then negative 2 over negative 2 is going to be 1. So the negative 1 half and 1 half are going to cancel out. And ultimately, delta is going to be negative 1. And then hence, epsilon is going to be negative 0 0.5. And we can plug this into our volume function to get v naught times 1 minus 0.5 x of a. And then we can then plug this, use this and our f sub j for each of the three species to determine a concentration function. So for a, our concentration function is going to be c a naught times 1 minus x of a over 1 minus 0.5 x of a. And we can rewrite f a naught over v naught as c a naught. And then we can do this same manipulation for B and C, and we get similar expressions. And now we can evaluate these expressions at 25% conversion of A. So X of A is going to be 0.25, and then C A naught is going to be 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. So when we plug in all of these numbers into the corresponding equations, we get that CA is 0 0.086 moles per decimeter cubed. CB is going to be 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. And C sub C is going to be 0 0.014 moles per decimeter cubed. Now we, can, now we can look at the concentration of B at 100% conversion of A. So when we plug X of A equals 1 into this, we're going to get that C sub B is going to be 0 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed. Next, we can move on to writing the expression for the rate of disappearance of A as a function of x of A. First off, we need to write out a rate law for the rate of disappearance. Because this is an elementary step reaction, we can use the stoichiometric coefficients of A and B as the powers to our general rate law. So in this case, negative r of sub a is going to be equal to rate constant times concentration of a squared times concentration of b. <clears throat> and in the previous part, we found expressions for c a and c b. So we can plug those expressions into them and then do some algebra to get our final expression for r, negative r sub a, which is going to be the rate constant times c a naught squared times quantity 1 minus x of a squared times 1 minus 1 half x of a all over 1 minus 0.5 x of a and all that is cubed. And then we can evaluate the ka c, c a naught squared because we're given that c a naught is 2 mole per decimeter cubed and ka is 2 decimeter to 6 per mole second. And that's going to evaluate to 8 for before all the conversion term part. And you ultimately get a rate of disappearance of A being equal to this function right here. And then we can evaluate the rate of disappearance at 0.5 conversion. And we can we see that the rate of conversion the rate of disappearance of A is equal to 3.56 moles per second. Now, to get the overall rate, we can use stoichiometric relation of 1 over the stoichiometric coefficient of species A times the rate of disappearance of species A 
and that ultimately gives us 1.78 moles per second. So this is an example of how we can use stoichiometric tables to determine concentration. And one of the key takeaways from this problem is that for gases, we need to factor in this the temperature and pressure parts. But for liquids, we actually don't because liquids do not have as sig significant an impact for temperature and pressure. So to reiterate, liquids, we do not need to factor in the T and P terms, while for gases, we do. And that is all.